Hi, I'm Mike with Uktastic. I'm here again at SCNA. I'm sitting down with Jen Meyer from uh, Relevance, and she, as a, well, you're a designer, you're a uh, uh, digital native designer, and uh, you come and you speak to technical audiences, uh, and programmers and, and, and developers, <coughs> and, uh, excuse me, uh, and also uh, uh, you speak at, at des to designers. I'm sure that, or I believe that there's a, probably a big difference between those two audiences, uh, what is it uh, that you, do you, you see any difference when you speak to them? Um, there's some differences, and I'm definitely personally more comfortable in the, the techie community, for lack of a better mm -hmm. better term. Um, that's kind of where I started, and that's where I, I feel most at home, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, when I go speak to designers, I feel a little bit kind yeah. of on the other side of things because I do spend so much time in the technical uh, landscape, but there is definitely differences. Mm -hmm. I think um, a lot of the designers that I know, I know a lot of people who are in the UX community, which um, is kind of almost a subset of the, the larger design community, right. um, and, you know, they have, they work with different mediums and some of them are um, you know product designers and but it's still very interesting to be able to find the common ground in between mm -hmm. things it sometimes just takes a little bit more work to figure out what a designer's perspective and what medium they right. work in and where they're coming from and then find the common grounds um, you don't feel I do have to do that as much but in the tech community yeah. um, and I, I do think the designers too tend to um, they, they have a they tend to see a larger sense of a lot of things, not right. to say that tech people, you know, are uh, narrow-minded or anything like right. that's not that at all. But I think uh, designers just tend to have a, a very large sense of everything. Right. Um, so, and then that always helps, um, even if they're not very technical, um, I can kind of find some common ground in what they, what they are passionate about and what they do and connect it to what I do and, and do that. And uh, that's, that's the main thing with the designers. When you say uh, a broader sense, do you mean that they're looking at their design and how their design interacts where maybe a developer is just like, oh, how do I make this design work with this app? I think I think that could be. I could, um, I'm not sure exactly what it is, honestly. Right. It's just kind of an impression that I get. Um, and I think that uh, designers tend to... They're, they just really do like to have the large picture. They like to know how, how everything fits together. And I'm like that in that sense. Right. That's one thing that I do like to talk to developers. I feel sometimes it's easy to get wrapped up in little things. And details are important. Right. But it's really important for me to have larger context on things. And I think that's something I bring um, as a designer, of having a context and knowing how things fit in. And that's the same whether you know, you're know you actually doing that in a product or you're dealing with the community. You have to right. manage those perspectives. And just to jump back, when I introduce you as as a digital native, what what does that what does that mean? That's a term that I just started to coin actually oh, okay. because um, no, I haven't heard anybody else use it, but it was a way that I'm using to describe myself. Okay. Um, because I, I am a designer, I work as a design, designer in software, but I don't have a formal design background. So I didn't right. like come from a, a print background and then learn to do. Um, I learned design by learning HTML back in right. like 2001 and things so, like that. So you started on I computer. started in a digital uh, landscape. And so everything that I've, I've learned about design theory, I've learned about you know design principles. Mm -hmm. But since I'm always working in a digital medium, all of those principles I've always applied you know digitally, not to, to print or things like that. And I have done some print projects, but actually print projects are more of a struggle for me because I'm used to working in yeah. a digital thing. So like, it's, why doesn't this Exactly. Resize? I get really nervous <laughs> if I make something for print and I'm like, I can't change it afterwards right. or I can't change it down the road. It's a, it's a completely different process, completely different medium. Um, but, and you can do it. The principles are the same. It's just about learning that medium. And that's the thing with, I, I like the idea of a digital native designer in this field because those are designers who understand how design works in this medium and all the specific you know, implementations and needs and all the possibilities. Is there anything that when you go and you're talking to a technical um, programmer audience that is, you think is particularly hard to get across, um, that maybe as, as developers we're just not quite attuned enough to some concept or idea that you, you see maybe as you go to one conference after another, this one just, just doesn't click for some reason. You know, honestly, there really isn't. I have really good experiences talking to developers um, universally. Every, I've talked about this topic at uh, many conferences, and um, 
I always have developers come and talk to me yeah. and they ask me like how can I learn and there's a lot of them that feel that they can't but I don't think there's any one thing that would be holding I've never seen anything across the boards like mm -hmm. no they're not getting this it's just a matter of not knowing where to start really right. which has nothing to do with them it's it's about you know um, how we're educating people and sharing information and that's one of the reasons in my talk I talk about how designers need to be more explicit and mm -hmm. be more clear so that developers understand this but mostly all, in fact you know pretty much universally all the developers that I've talked to developers I work with are really right. interested in learning these things on their own I think the only thing holding them back is not knowing exactly where to start which right. hopefully is something that I can I can work on helping and us, us other you know digital designers can work on putting yeah. resources out there and stuff like because that we can certainly use a little bit more usability and a little mm -hmm. bit more just make it look nice mm -hmm. I, and that is uh, have you spoken like a, a software craftsmanship in North America is a uh, what we call a polyglot it's mm -hmm. not one platform um, but uh, working in a, a rail have, have you spoken at like any rail specific or any any uh, on that specific or any uh, any specific technology? I have spoken at specific Ruby conferences, mm -hmm. although um, most Ruby conferences that I have spoken at are very open <laughs> to, yeah. to things. Um, I have not spoken at anything else specific, although I have spoken at other Polyglot conferences that tend toward mm -hmm. more towards .NET, more towards things like that. Um, so there's a wide range of, right. of programmers, but honestly, uh, the same... I, I still have the same experience, it's the same common ground of yeah. the interest in learning at least a little bit of design. Yeah, yeah. well, the, the question I was going to get at though, uh, before I got a little distracted mm -hmm. as well, was that there seems to be a signature style in mm -hmm. each one of those that, that you kind of know that uh, a, a .NET Microsoft platform because it's mm -hmm. got its own design influences versus uh, something on like iOS, which mm -hmm. is, you know, that it was an right, Apple. Right. But, and, and even in the Rails community, I tend to see a, a certain um, style. And now with Bootstrap, that's yeah. going to be. You know, I mean, I, I have to admit, even on my own site, it's it's mm -hmm. it's bootstrap. I mean, it's it's easy, and it takes me right. a long way. Um, okay, have, have you? Is that something that's? Uh, is that something that concerns you that maybe there's starting to be like, this, or or is that um, uh, maybe a good thing that there's these signature styles that are starting to emerge for these different? Yeah, it doesn't really concern me. I think yeah. I think it's okay. I. I I will stop short of saying Bootstrap is, is the, the solution for <laughs> yeah. everything. But no, and, and actually I had a conversation with somebody yesterday where I was kind of making the joke, but he was describing a, circ a situation where I'm like, you know, honestly, in that particular circumstance, it makes sense for you to do that. So that's what I feel, that there are just different solutions for different problems. And I think as long as, um, you know, they're still kind of going back to that design foundation or that right. you're still in touch with, you know, um, the collaborative process and that there are still people involved in this. You're making deliberate decisions. I think okay. that's what it really comes down to is we have standards that we're not thinking about and that's true for whatever discipline. It's the same thing in design mm -hmm. and design and development. Um, if you're just doing things unthinkingly because that's what everybody does, then right. that's obviously probably not the best thing it's to do. You gotta have the animated GIF. Right. <laughs> yeah. If but it doesn't you, sparkle. Right. <laughs> but there are, you know, there are some things where even if it may not be the ideal solution in every case, in some cases it makes sense to do that. Mm -hmm. In different languages, there are things that make more sense than others. So developing solutions specifically for them, I don't think is a bad thing as long as we're continuing to think deliberately about them. Well, thank you very much for Absolutely. sitting down. Thank you.